So in this video, we're going to learn how to change vectors to and from rectangular form. So let's start with um, changing to rectangular form. And this, what this means is we're going to have a vector, and we'll know how long it is. We'll know its magnitude. This vector is length 7. And we'll have some sort of description about which way it's pointed. This one's going 15 degrees down into quadrant 4. I'm going to take that information. I want to figure out what are its x and y components. And I've broken this down in some steps to hopefully make it straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a right triangle with the vector as the hypotenuse. So that's going to look like this. Pretty straightforward. Next, we're going to take this triangle that we've just made, and we're going to label it for trig. So you have this angle. So this will be hypotenuse. There's adjacent to the angle, and there's opposite the angle. Remember, what the arc touches is adjacent and hypotenuse. There's opposite. Now we're, gonna, now we're gonna use trigonometry to figure out how long opposite is and how long adjacent is. So we remember sine of an angle is opposite over hypotenuse. That's opposite over 7. And then we solve by multiplying both sides by 7. And we get opposite of 7 sine 15 degrees. Calculator tells me that's around 1.8. Likewise, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. Here that's adjacent over 7. So I get 7 cosine 15 degrees or the adjacent is around 6.8. So we're pretty much done here. The only thing you have to be careful about is you have to figure out which one is the x, which one is the y, and you have to make them negative. You have to make x negative if it's pointing to the left, and you have to make y negative if the vector's pointing down. So let me show you what I mean over here. So the x component is going to be this adjacent. That's horizontal. The vector's going to the right. It's going, here's the tail, the x part is to the right, so that means this x component is positive. But the y component, this 1.8, which we figured out down here, is going down, because it's going down like this. So that means y is negative when it's going down. That means this y component has to be negative. And there we have our answer. The rectangular component form for this vector u that we were given at the start is 6.8 comma negative 1.8. So now you should try one. So here's another vector. I'm giving you its magnitude and its direction. I want you to pause the video and just give it a shot. Okay, so here are my directions again. So let's follow them along. So I'm going to make a right triangle and label it for trig. There I have adjacent and I have opposite. Then I'm going to use trigonometry to figure out how long the adjacent and the opposite are. So I have sine 25 degrees is opposite over 12. Solving that out, I get the opposite is 5.1. Cosine 25 degrees is adjacent over 12. Solving this out, I get adjacent is 10.9. Now I just need to figure out which component is x, which component is y, and whether they need to be negative. If I look here, I can see the x component which is horizontal, is going to the left. The vector is going like this, so the x component is going this far to the left. So this has to be negative 5.1 for the x. The y component is down. It goes from here down like that. So that means that this y component, this 10.9, also has to be negative. That makes sense. This vector is going down and to the left, so it should be Negative, five, negative x component for the left, and a negative y component for the down. What about the other way? What if I want to figure out how long a vector is, its magnitude and its direction, if I'm given the components? So here's my example. I'm going to take this vector 4, comma, negative 6. I'm going to sketch it out and figure out its length and its direction. Remember, magnitude is just length. So this vector is 4 to the right and 6 down. So my first two steps are the same as before. I'm going to make a right triangle and I'm going to label it for trigonometry. So here the angle is not given. So you have to choose where you're going to put the angle. And the key here is the angle is always at the tail of the vector. You're never going to choose an angle at the tip. You're going to choose an angle at the tail of the vector to properly describe which way this vector goes. So there's the 4 and the 6. 
that come from the components that were given. I don't know the hypotenuse. So remember, the magnitude of the vector is just how long it is. So I'll use Pythagorean theorem to figure that out, because I have the other two sides. So the hypotenuse squared is 4 squared plus 6 squared. I square and add these up. I get the hypotenuse is about 7.2, so that would be the magnitude of my vector. What about the angle? Well, it's always going to be found using tangent. You can use tangent to get that angle theta. The reason I'm going to use tangent is because I know these two values. You shouldn't use this. This is rounded and approximate. Use the two components that you were given. Use the 6 and the 4. So I know tangent is opposite over hypotenuse, which is 6 over 4. So therefore, if I want to get the theta, I, quote, divide away, unquote, the tangent. I get inverse tangent, 6 over 4. Calculator tells me that that's around 56 degrees. So my description of this vector is it has magnitude 7.2 and its direction. And I have to be somewhat descriptive so I know where the 56 degrees is. So I'm going to say it's 56 degrees below the positive x-axis. Here's the positive x-axis. I could also say it's 56 degrees down into quadrant 4. There's different ways to describe this angle. You can't just say 56 degrees because I don't know where the 56 degrees is. So here's how I chose to describe it. 56 degrees below the positive x-axis. And that is it.